one thing, uh, one thing that I wanted to do with this workshop is uh, leave tons of time for anyone to ask questions that they might have about Ada um, and, and answer any questions about um, how people might accomplish some of the things that they, they want to do with their bots. Um, it's a sort of new platform for you guys to be learning. Um, we, uh, I, don't, I don't expect that uh, any of you have used Ada on the, on the, the like back end side before. Um, so I want to make sure that I leave uh, lots of time for me to answer any questions and give uh, sort of a demonstration on uh, how you guys might, might accomplish uh, some of the things you might be building with Ada. So um, one thing that I would like to get started with is I have some really simple diagrams on uh, how Ada works in the back end, um, on like how we process messages, um, and basically like what Ada is at its uh, its like most fundamental level. So I'll share you guys some drawings that I have. Um, so. Ada, from a user perspective, is a is a chatbot, um, and you can see it uh, if we go to zoom.com. Everyone can see my screen, right? Now I can't see the chat. Yeah. Okay, sweet. So zoom.com, well, they're one of our biggest clients, and they use Ada down here in the bottom right corner. So. Um, from a user perspective, this, it's just a, a chat interface that uh, allows me to interact with sort of conversational flows that they've set up in the back end. So um, I can ask, uh, how do I meet? And I, I can probably guarantee that they have not trained uh, a, a, an answer to this exact string. Um, and so that's one of the, the sort of like magical pieces of Ada. Um, so what is Ada at its most fundamental level? It's Ada is basically just a, a function that takes some, some user strings, um, processes them and, uh, and, and serves a response. Um, answers can be connected in various ways through these, uh, uh, through these quick reply buttons at the very bottom. Um, so these can lead into other answers that uh, may or may not have training. And the, these create um, these, very, uh, these very complicated relationships between answers. Um, if you're a CS uh, or a software engineering um, student, then these would be uh, these would basically be directional uh, cyclical graphs. There, it's not a tree. People like to think about them as trees. From uh, or like our customers talk about them as trees. They are not trees. Um, answers can cycle, and they are they are directed. So beyond that what happens uh, like under, under Ada's hood. Um, I'm just gonna zoom in here so everyone can see this more easily. So what's happening inside this giant function that we, we call Ada? Um, well, so we get, we get our string, our question from, um, from our chatter and it's, yeah, so we don't, we don't use any neural networks, but so that sort of machine learning magic happens here where I, ha I have a matrix set up, a demonstrational matrix. So um, we have a machine, a machine learning model that takes that string um, and converts it to some uh, multi-dimensional matrix. And then we do some fancy linear algebra and compare uh, these, two, these two vectors together. Basically, we find uh, we find uh, a piece of training that a, a bot builder has set up, um, and and the question that the user is, the the chatter is asked, 
Um, and if it's within some threshold that, that we, we set, but we also give some, uh, some options to, to our customers to set that threshold, um, if it's within that threshold, then we serve the answer that uh, matches to it. So for example, uh, we, have a, we get an input, hello. Um, we convert that to our multi-dimensional matrix. And for example, we're just gonna call that a number, 420. And we do a comparison to uh, this, this number 420 to um, all of the training that we have in, in a bot. And we find the closest one. Um, sometimes there's two that are very close. If someone uh, asks uh, to um, ask a question that is, uh, looks, looks like one question, but it also looks like another, um, we actually handle this somewhat gracefully. We call it a clarification. And so we say, uh, we don't know, we, we, we don't, we're not confident that we know what to serve you with. So uh, we're gonna give you some options on what to, to get back. And then if you've been playing with Ada, you know that you have these like blocks that you can use to create answers. Um, there's various blocks from, starting from simple ones like a text block um, up until more complicated ones uh, like the HTTP request block, um, as well as the, the conditional block. Uh, I'm not sure if people have gotten around to it, but there's a, um, there's a conditional block there as well. So you can set up conditions to check the values of certain variables um, and, and serve different content that way. And then after we process all those blocks, we start sending them as packages back to the user um, and, and let them continue with their, their chat. So you can see this in action right here. So I say, I said, um, I said, hi, or basically I was already served with a greeting. And then I said, how do I meet? And then it processed a bunch of blocks um, and sent them back to me. So, why don't I go ahead and I'm going to take everyone through some of the, uh, the nitty gritty details of how to actually build these things. Give me a minute. So this is this is my personal bot. Um, this is the this is the bot that uh, was given to me by Ada back when I started, like four years ago, and I still use it this day to this day to uh, test various things uh, with the dashboard. This is this is the software product that I, I'm also responsible for at Ada. Um, so I put uh, I put a, a lot of blood, sweat, and tears into this. Okay, so I'm just gonna readjust my screen. So we can see here on the right side, I have a ton of different blocks at my disposal. And one thing that if, if you stare at it for long enough, um, you start to notice that there's, it, it, it blurs the line between uh, uh, a, a some sort of um, like dashboard where you can, uh, start to see um, analytics and various things like that to building out, it has all the building blocks of a programming language. So this is where I think Ada becomes really powerful uh, for developers as well, because you have tools here like a conditional where I can set up a condition. I can say if uh, a URL contains um, uh, HTTP or contains Google. And then I can serve different content based on what sort of responses I get back. If it contains Google, I can say this website is Google. Um, I can say uh, if it, if the URL um, is my website, I can say that this website is and then 
I have a I have an else statement at the bottom here, and I can say I'm not sure what this is. I can save that. I don't need to have any training. Um, uh, the other thing that I haven't done here is I haven't captured any information. I need to set a value for my URL and say, uh, what website? And say, what website are you looking at? I can save my response here as a URL or as the value for URL. Um, and I'm just gonna go ahead and run this. So let's see. Oh, actually, I haven't had any training. Let's call this website. I'm gonna open up my test bot over here. I'm gonna say website. It's gonna say, hello, what website are you looking at? And I'm gonna say uh, google.com. And it's gonna say, this website is Google. Now let's go through this again. Um, what was I, am I looking at? I'm looking at brandonmoa.com. Um, and, oh, no, I messed that up. Uh, oh, here. So what, actually, this is a good example. So what happened right here? I said website and immediately it said, this website is Google. So what happened there? It didn't let me, it didn't take me to this, this next block that I had. Think about this as code, right? Like this is why it's really, um, it's, it's fairly easy for developers to debug these chat interfaces at Ada. A lot of the time um, when, when bugs are filed, um, Ada, uh, like engineers at Ada will, uh, will look at, um, we'll try and debug the conversations um, because it's just like debugging code. So what happened here? It said, hello. We can take a look at this again. It said, hello. Um, and then immediately it jumped to this website is Google. So why didn't it run this capture? The reason it didn't run this capture is because um, it already has a value for, for me, it knows that I've inputted the value for a variable called URL, and that value was Google or google.com. So there's an option here. Uh, this allows you to ask the question uh, and say the response, even if the question has already been asked before. So we don't, act, we try not to ask questions twice. We try to make these conversations as, as easy as possible. And so one of the value propositions of Ada is is that we, we build personalized customer experiences at scale. So from a chatter perspective, I've already talked to this, this, this bot and I've already told it my email. It shouldn't have to ask me again. But sometimes you wanna always ask a, a question. So I, I wanna ask uh, to get the URL again. So I'm gonna turn this always ask on. I'm gonna save it. And now let's run through this again. Like a website, it says hello. It says what website are you looking at? Now it's doing what I want it to do. I'm gonna say brandonmoa.com. And it's gonna say, this website is on Mary Brandon. And then for to test the else case, um, website, I'm gonna go to yohacks.ca. And it goes, I'm not sure what this is. So very interesting there. Um, so this is the, here's an, so this was an, an example of, of using a conditional, but there's so many other things you can do. Um, there's these, uh, you, can, you can serve shuffle messages, which shuffles through various pieces of text. Uh, you can serve a video, um, but one of the really cool things uh, the, one of the most powerful blocks, and, and this, is, this is the block that um, usually clients have to pay the most for, and uh, anyone who, who has been using an Adabot right now, um, I've added this block uh, to your bot, and it's the HTTP request block. So actually, I'm just going gonna, gonna to start a new answer. Um,
So um, let's, I want to step back for a minute again. At the start of the talk, um, I talked about how uh, at its basic functionality, ADA, uh, ADA is a function. And you can, you can really start to see that when, when you, uh, you start playing with these blocks, right? Like in, in this, this test chat, you can see that it, uh, we start our function, it prompts me for some input. It does some processing. It runs through this conditionals. You can think of this as an if else block or a switch case. Um, and then it sends something back. So the other, uh, so this block I think is going to be really powerful for you guys. It is a, uh, it's just an HTTP request. Um, one thing I found really difficult when I was starting out programming um, was uh, like, how do you make things more, more powerful? How, how can you um, build an API or use an API within your application? And writing HTTP requests was um, like pretty tedious. It can be pretty tedious. And so we like abstract all of the information into this, this nice looking, um, well, ni nice looking is, is maybe being a little generous, but um, we've abstracted a lot inside of here and it's enough it's a, enough abstraction that um, non-technical builders can use it so let's go to an example i have a i have a blog and this is not a plug um i think this is the url i'm gonna i'm gonna try and freehand this http request so the api is uh, um, let me just grab it quickly. No, now I can't remember it. One second. So here we go. I got it. So here's the API for my blog. So let's see if this works. I think this is an unauthenticated endpoint. I may need to spin up the, the Heroku app. Um, but you can do all, with this block, you can do all of the same things um, that you would do with code. You can, uh, it is asking me. Okay, give me one second. I'm just gonna grab my, uh, You guys got to promise not to, not to steal this. So it's asking for some authorization. Um, here is the this is the key to uh, to access this endpoint on the blog, and let's retry this request. Now I get to a two hundred. Everything's good, and I get all of the articles in my blog. And now I can I can build something with this API. So this, uh, like if you're, for example, you want to build a bot to to help people find um, vaccine uh, vaccine locations. If you were to build an API that um, took all like grabbed all that data and made a clean clean API for it, um, you can you can build a chat interface that anyone can access that can, um, can find vaccine and uh, vaccine locations. Um, it, it's these sort of blocks that make, um, make it a so versatile. Um, actually an interesting story during the, the beginning of the pandemic, um, we were requested by uh, the government of Canada to to uh, they, they basically put out a, a request for um, like proposals of um, some some software to to help people get information on how to get back into the country. And Ada, we a bunch of us stayed up late one night um, and hacked on a, a chatbot together. They they ultimately um, decided not to to pursue uh, our software uh, solution, but 
um, it was a really interesting exercise and we, we demoed it to um, some MPs. So I don't know, what, what do we wanna do with this? Let's grab the, um, let's grab the title of this, of this blog post. We're gonna save it, uh, we're just gonna save it to only this answer. And the name is gonna be title. We'll save it. The data key, this is, this is the data key here um, just tells the block to go to this, this key path to get the information that it needs. Um, we also need an error answer. So we give it an error response. So let's save this. Now we're doing it live. So let's, uh, let's get some, some fingers crossed and hope that this works. Um, I need, uh, I need a, some training. I'm going to call this uh, blog. So when I say blog, it's going to fire this HTTP request. And I want to be able to check this. So I need to say um, the second, because uh, arrays start at zero, the second blog title is this blog title. So let's say that we can test it out. I can say uh, blog. There we go. So my chat bot went through that function X that I was talking about earlier, or that function uh, F of X. It did a bunch of math. Um, here it wasn't so fancy because uh, I didn't come up with a good example. Um, and it fired off an HTTP request. We basically, we've mocked it on our ADA servers and um, we processed the, the HTTP request, which is this, this block is just a, a piece of, of JSON. And then we've served, we've pulled a third party API and pulled some information and sent it back to the, the chatter. And any, any of our, our bots uh, that you see out in the wild will use some form of this. Um, this these are the, the basic building blocks for, for building a personalized uh, customer experience. Um, for example, so one of the, one of the better use cases uh, of ADA is um, any use case that our customer builds for generating revenue. So a lot of our customers um, write, uh, will build flows that will generate them revenue. And, and uh, that way we provide a ton of value for our customers. So uh, TELUS, for example, was one of our first customers that built out a, a rev, revenue generating uh, flow into their, their chatbot. They did this something like two and a half years ago uh, when we had first built this block. And uh, it allows the, the users to sign in and now they're authenticated within ADA and they can add data top-ups or whatever to their, uh, uh, to, to their, or like, uh, uh, to their plans. And I went on vacation one time, I'm a Telus customer and I used ADA's chat experience to add data roaming to my plan. I didn't have to talk to anyone. All I did was like talk to an ADA bot and they did it within like, it, it happens within two seconds. It's way, it's a way better experience. Um, I see a question in here, I've recently, or a statement. Uh, I've recently learned about UX writing and messaging voice guidelines that a company may have. How does ADA provide the chatbot technology while also reflecting the brand voice of the client? So the really nice thing about, um, about that is, is that ADA's not, we're not objective about any of those things. We allow for a lot of uh, personalization uh, from from the builder, from our client, to to make their bot sound um, as whatever personality they want. So, um, let me give you a good example. Air Asia is one of our customers, and if I go to Air Asia.
they have, uh, they were one of our first customers who, who built uh, a really extensive personality into their, their chatbot. So they call her Ava and, oh God, why are they making me do all this? I just want to talk to Ava. They like built this whole persona around their bot. Like this, this like avatar, this like fake person didn't exist until, uh, until Ada became, or Ada became their, their like first line of defense for their, their customer service. And they take very seriously the content that goes into their bot um, and making sure that it reflects this personality. Um, so Ada is not very prescriptive about those things. And um, we give our customers a lot of, um, a lot of uh, freedom to do what they want. The only thing that we do is we provide the expertise and the tool um, to to build really good chat experiences. Um, so I'm running very low on time. I, I wanted to leave a lot more more time for people to ask questions. Um, but very quickly, I want to show you one of my favorite features that we that we built recently. Um, I'm just going to delete this, and I'm going to edit. I'm just going to leave it like this. So with, with our capture blocks, and I think I've turned this feature on for everyone. If you don't have it, uh, let me know. We have this really fancy feature, uh, and I'm getting, I'm getting chills just thinking about it, but um, smart detection. This is a feature that we built so that uh, we can make uh, conversations a little bit easier and more feel more uh, personalized. So before prompting the user to type, the bot will present the chatter with a list of previously mentioned entities that look like possible matches. Uh, what uh, what uh, entities do we have available to us? Um, we have name, location, and date or time. So I'm, I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use uh, uh, first name as an example. And I'm going to use capture. Uh, I'm going to use um, uh, location as an example. I'm just going to very quickly hack together a, uh, a cool demo. So for this demo, um, I'm going to want to uh, 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 book a flight. Uh, or uh, yeah, we'll call it book of flight. That's good. And uh, what's your name? Name is going to be uh, name. It's gonna be available in all answers. Um, uh, where are you flying from? And this is going to be from location. It's going to be available in all answers. Um, and uh, two, this is going to be where are you going? This is going to be a, uh, this is going to be two location. So let me go on all answers, save it, any type of city, any type of city, yes. And at the very end, we're gonna basically return back to the user. Uh, hey, name, I see you're trying to fly from, from location to, to location. Let me help with that. Okay, hopefully this goes well because I want this to uh, blow your minds. So I imagine I'm a customer who is disgruntled or in a rush. And uh, I just, I'm like, uh, my name is Brandon and I'm 
trying to get from Toronto to Vancouver. I'm just gonna capitalize my name. I come in here. The, the let's say that the bot the bot doesn't know who I am. Actually, I'll I'll, I'll refresh this just to uh, to prove to you guys how magical this is. I'm gonna come in here and uh, bot gives me some greeting. I don't even read it, and I just I just tell them what I'm trying to do. Ada doesn't know anything right now. This do, this is this training doesn't match up to anything, and uh, uh, I'm just trying to get some help. So. Uh, they go, I don't understand. Uh, and I'm just going to, uh, okay, book a flight. That's what I want to do. I want to book a flight. And it goes, what's your name? But it already knows my name because I've already told it my name. And I said, my name is Brandon here. And so we've extracted this name from here. And instead of forcing me to type in my name again, it knows that my name is Brandon. Where am I flying from? I'm flying from uh, Toronto and I'm trying to get to Vancouver. I don't have to type any of these things in, it just knows. So like I, in a half hour, I couldn't show you everything with Ada. I've showed you like some, some complicated things, uh, some deeper, deeper things, things that a lot of our clients don't have access to. Um, but just to illustrate the types of things that you can build on top of Ada and um, how versatile it is and to try and think about it uh, not as constrained to a chat interface or like a, a text, um, but to think about it as an interface to uh, any other third-party API or service that, that you might wanna build. So. I encourage you to uh, delve into Ada and poke around and, and see what it does. Um, Cause there's, there's a whole lot more. And if you have any questions, I really recommend that you post it in the, the sponsor Ada channel. Um, there's a few, there's a, a few developers in there, including myself who would be happy to help you try and build something. And I think I'm a little over time. Is there anyone that has any questions that they wanna ask now? Um, and I can ship. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I think there's just one question in the Q and A area. Um, how do you think Ada has removed barriers to building chatbots, and do you think Ada could expand this to be more general? Um. So, like, I, I think when when we look across uh, our platform as a, as opposed to other chatbot providers and and ask ourselves why why do people choose us over uh, over other competitors and I, I i think it's really down to the ease of our platform like the the once you wrap your head around um, especially if you're not a technical person that these blocks are sequential. Um, they basically just represent what's happening inside of the chat interface. Some of these blocks don't render text, some of them do. Um, and uh, like once you get the hang of it, of just like, like dragging things in and testing it, going through the process that you, you debug anything, um, it, it makes it really fun and, and easy. Um, what was the second part of the question? It was, do you think Ada could expand this to be more general? Um, do we think that I, we could expand this to be more general? Um, I think it is pretty general, right? Like the platform is, I guess it, it's specific to uh, like web, it, specific to a chat interface. Um, but we don't prescribe what you can or should do with it. Um, we also allow you to, to have this, uh, uh, to build out your, your bot in um, different, uh, different mediums. So there's Facebook Messenger, there's Twilio SMS. Um, 
and uh, there's also WhatsApp. I think I can probably give you guys uh, access to the WhatsApp integration if you want. So AirAsia, again, is one of the customers that have like most people, I think, interact with Ada through WhatsApp. Um, but yeah, we, we don't prescribe uh, too much on how you should do it. Like it's really based on the needs of, of your business or what you want to do. Um, we've donated bots to organizations and nonprofits that um, uh, that don't have the resources to have like real people help out. Um, and so Ada is a really good substitute for that. Thanks. Uh, and there's one other question. Is there a way to email the conversation to the user? Um, yes, I believe so. Um, you can do that through, uh, I think it is the uh, email block. So there's a, there's a block here that asks you for email and uh, I'll, it sends this, it does an email handoff, it sends an email to, uh, to you. Um, wait, was the question to send an email to the user? I believe so, to the uh, user, yes. I don't know if there's a way to send an email to the user as far as I'm aware, but I'm sure SendGrid has a, a fancy dancy API that uh, you could probably implement it with if you needed it. And this is where I think like Ada's not very prescriptive. We, we have blocks for most things, but um, if you don't, if there isn't a block for it, you can make one yourself with the request block. And that's actually how a lot of our, um, our specific blocks have come into existence. Like we have this index ticketing block um, that started out as an HTTP block. Yeah, thank you. Okay, um, I think that's it for me. I've gone over, uh, but if you have any questions, please message the, the sponsor Ada channel. And uh, oh, someone has raised their hand, Mona. I don't Did know you. how to work this. Did you have uh, another question, Mona? If yes, feel free to drop it in the chat or in the Q&A area. Uh, Brandy can answer there, or if you want, I can. Yes, please, or or uh, or message the the sponsor Ada channel. I'll I'll go over there and see if there's any questions. Awesome, thank you so much, Brandon. This is awesome. I hope everyone had a chance to look through this. Um, and oh, I think the question was, can you attach it to Courier to email? I'm sure. I'm sure you could. I'm not familiar with the Courier uh, API, but. Um, if it if it has an open API, uh, I would I would really uh, encourage you to try um, hacking something together that that uses the request block to uh, connect to it. Okay, thank you. Uh, yeah, so if anyone has any further questions, feel free to message Brandon on the Discord channel on sponsor Ada, and they'd be more than happy to help you out there. Thanks once again, Brandon. This is awesome. Thank you, everyone. All right.